Okay. Hello, we welcome Northeastern student athletes, Sean Osius and Vasa Pushitsa to the stage. And we'll remind you, if you wouldn't mind, to please let us know when you have a question. I'll direct the microphone holder to your area, and you can ask your question into the microphone and be heard. So let's open it up to questions for Sean Osius and Vasa Pushitsa. Hey, Sean Goldwyn, University Daily Kansan. Uh, Vasa, being a senior, uh, your last chance to make the tournament, uh, just what does it mean to you to you know, be here and sort of have this accomplishment? Yeah, I mean, it means everything. You know, uh, as, I, as I already said, you know, coming over from Serbia, I had a, I had a goal to you know, make an NCAA tournament. And uh, just being here you know, six years and watching you know, in high school and you know, every year in college how big this is and what it means to people, um, not only for your university, but to everyone, you know, it's followed all over, all over the world. And uh, um, I didn't really want to finish my career without making it here at least once. So um, I'm really glad that, uh, that we're here now and, uh, you know, can't wait to step on the court tomorrow. John Kern, Boston Globe. Um, Sean, when, when you look at the, the last half of conference play and What really changed the last half of the season defensively to where you had that kind of consistent, sustained success? Um, I think for us, just knowing that we're closer and closer to that that time in March and uh, knowing that we need to get on the same page, all of us defensively, and uh, we just buckled down the last half of the season. Whoever was on the court was ready to play and step into their roles. Coaches did a great job with ex execution and game plan, so we just really knew that last half of the season we're getting close to CAAs and hopefully a chance to make it to the tournament and uh, we really stay disciplined and we just try to execute every game. Chris Comrani with the Salt Lake Tribune. Guys, obviously Kansas is a story program and, and every year a low seed shocks somebody. I'm wondering what is it about this team this year that you guys feel like you have a shot against one of the best teams in college basketball? Sean? Uh, we're not looking at the name on the front of the jersey. At the end of the day, you tie your shoes the same way we do. You put on the jersey the same way we do. At the end of the day, it's not within those nine four feet. You you gotta come to play, and um, we're gonna make sure that we're prepared to play. And uh, we don't care who we play. And uh, it just happened to be Kansas. And hopefully, we'll be able to execute tomorrow and uh, put up a, a good uh, game plan and just be ready to play. Vasa, um, I mean, I, I agree with Sean uh, what he said, but. You know, Kansas is a big name. The Bill Self is, you know, one of the greatest college coaches in college basketball. And every year to have, you know, talented guys, tough hungry recruits. So we know that we are facing a talented team, but uh, we're also talented as well. We're experienced, and uh, um, I feel confident coming to, you know, tomorrow's game. Uh, you guys talked about KU, but can you talk a little bit just about what you guys can bring to the game and to the tournament? Vasa? Um, we're we're an experienced team. I think that's that's our strength. You know, we this is my second year playing with uh, with these guys. We uh, we were, we made it a championship game last year. We had a pretty good year last year. Unfortunately, didn't make it. Um, this year was with a lot of adversity, and I think that's what even made us better. So I think our experience playing with each other and uh, obviously our talent as well. Sean, yeah, uh, exactly what Vasa said. Experience and we're a mature group. Uh, I don't think we have what that many freshmen or any freshmen at all. So we've been playing with each other these last two years. And on top of that, we're a versatile team. Guys played in different roles, different positions throughout their careers here at Northeastern. So I mean, that's sort of advantage, I guess. And uh, we just try to use those two things to our advantage and hopefully get the best of uh, our, our opponents. Hi, Harold Bouchard with the Topeka Capital Journal. Vasa, uh, how was that year in Wichita like uh, at Sunrise Academy, and how did that uh, help you uh, prepare for, for college? Um, yeah, I mean, that was, that was my first year in the States. Um, you know, I came over to Kansas, Wichita, without knowing much about the States at all, and especially not about, you know, uh, Wichita itself. So uh, it, was, it was a really good experience. I got to play with a lot of Division One players, um, a lot of really good guys. I think by the time we had seven D1 players on, on my team, and uh, also I think seven on, on post-grade team. So 
every day was a lot of competing, a lot of coach college, uh, coaches coming watching our, um, you know, practices, open gyms, um, and you know, just seeing how, how people, you know, work over here in the United States, uh, a lot of hard work, a lot of, you know, 6 a.m., 7 a.m., um, so it was, a, it was a tough year, but uh, I think it, it helped me, you know, become who I am right now. Sean, uh, do you think you'll be guarding uh, Lawson a little bit? And if so, he's 6'9 and can play on the perimeter. How do you think that matchup will go, not only for you, but for your team? Um, I mean, it's not <laughs> up to me who I'm going to guard. It's up to coach. I'm willing to guard anyone on the court, obviously. Um, but he's a great player. Um, he could do a lot of things on the perimeter and the post. Uh, for us, we're going to stick to the game plan watch a lot of film on him and uh, just pick out his weaknesses and stuff. But like I said before, he's a great player. And uh, we're confident uh, that it's not just one person that's going to be able to hold him to whatever his averages are, but it's everybody. It's going to be a whole team effort. And uh, we look forward to that. Uh, for obviously, no one on this roster currently has been to the NCAA tournament, but Coach Cohen's been there a few times at Northeastern, URI, and BC. What kind of things has he tried to impart on you guys uh, during this week as you get ready to go in the March Madness? Sean? Uh, Coach Cohen just talks about staying within the moment. Um, don't get too high, don't get too low, just kind of even kill. Um, I mean, we earned, this we earned to be in this position, so just take advantage of it um, and just uh, take it all in because you never know when you're going to get this chance again. And we're very grateful for that. And, uh, but at the same time, we're not just happy to be here. We're trying to win some games, and we're trying to uh, make a statement. And uh, that's what we're trying to do. Vasa? Um, I mean, exactly as Sean said, uh, you know, we just can't, can't be you know, playing scared. It's kind of like the same mentality that we had in a conference tournament. Just be aggressive. Don't get too excited. Um, and just play your game. Uh, for, bo for both of you, uh, that t that game you lost last year in the in the conference finals, uh, having the big lead in the second half, how did how long how long did it take you guys to get over that, and uh, what that did that experience help you uh, prepare for this season? Vasa, um, I'm, I answered that question way too many times, you know, during this year, and uh, I mean, I kind of I kind of forget about it. Now, um, you know, just you know, obviously it was a tough loss, but uh, I think that's made that made us better, um, made us more experienced, more more calm um, in the situations like we had in uh, you know just last week and stuff. So um, really, just we're not thinking about that no more. It's you know next game mentality, and uh, that's it. Sean, uh, kind of exactly what Vasa said. I mean, people have been asking us that question a lot. Um, like I said, it's not going to help you this year. It didn't help us this uh, I mean, it helped us a little bit, but at the same time, it's a different game. It's a different Charleston team. And we're not only just worried about them. We have a whole bunch of opponents, 32 other teams that we have to play. We can't dwell on that fact. So for me, it was over. When it was over, it was over. Like, you got to get over it. It's a new season, and uh, we're trying to do better things. Braden Shaw, University of Daily Kansan. Um, the outside shot or three-point shot has been something that's kind of worked for you guys a lot this season. How big a role do you think that's going to play tomorrow? Vasa? Um, I mean, I mean that's who we are. But you know, we have multiple guys on the team that, that they're shooting really good percentages and they can make it. Um, I think, uh, uh, except for Anthony, I think every every player on our team is you know three-point threat, and uh, you know we're not really just focused on that. We try to play our game. We try to get easy open looks, and if that's three-point looks, you know, sure we're going to take him. And um, obviously, we probably need to make some tomorrow against Kansas, but we're not worried about that. We're just trying to play our game and uh, you know see kind of what's open out there. We are, it's a team team sport, and uh, we're, I think we're a really good, really good uh, team as a whole. So we don't really care who, who takes him or uh, what kind of shots we get. We're just trying to get good looks, and uh, that's what we're focused on tomorrow as well. Um, just for uh, both of you, yeah, what you said just a minute ago is really true about how you earned this being here. You, you dream about this for years, about being here, and now you're here. What, what's it, I know you've only been here for 24 hours or something, but what's it like to be here right now? Is it everything you thought it would be, or are you so into the moment that you almost can't even think like that? Sean? Um, I mean, it's an amazing feeling to be here. Um, like I said, it's our first time before. Everyone on this team, I mean, obviously Coach Cohen has been to this a lot of times, but for us, it's like, you got to think about it. We're one of the best 64 teams in the country. 
at this time. When we get to play for a national championship, like, that's a dream come true to anybody. And like I said before, we're not just happy to be here. Like we're trying to win some games. Like, I mean, it's obviously we're taking in the uh, sights and everything and being around uh, in a jazz arena and stuff like that and all this uh, hoop flaw. But at the same time, we know we came here to win some games, not to just take pictures and talk on the mic all day, so. Vasa? Um, yeah, I mean, it's just enjoying every day and, you know, kind of soaking everything in. But, you know, at the same time, we can't get overwhelmed and, you know, focused. We're here to, you know, win games and play basketball. And uh, that's, what, that's what we're trying to do. Uh, sort of on that note, uh, just curious if you guys have any memories or anything that sticks out from when you were a kid watching the tournament, any upsets, buzzer beaters, uh, just from the history of the tournament that you guys remember uh, watching in your childhood? Sean? Uh, for me, I probably had two because I grew up watching the tournament up until I got into college because um, I don't want to watch guys the same age as me. But uh, for me, it's probably Jimmer, Jimmer Fredette's uh, college run. That was pretty special. And then watching Kemba Walker and what he did for UConn was like, a big thing for me. I used to buy the knee sleeves and the knee pads just like him to try to be like him and stuff like that. So those two things really stood out for me. And uh, I was always praying and wishing that I could get to this moment. And uh, now that I'm here, I'm going to take advantage of it. We're all going to take advantage of it. Vasa? Um, for me, obviously, I haven't followed you know college basketball as close as I did in the last you know, five or six years. Um, obviously, everybody knows about Campbell Walker's run. And uh, you know that's something special. but. Um, also, there was a, an experience where my friend uh, played at Arizona my freshman year, and uh, I went to watch those games, Sweet 16, Elite Eight, um, in Staples Center. So, um, you know, those were those were special moments and it's something that I always remember and kind of what gave me motivation to work hard and you know hopefully make it one day. And you know, here I am now. Uh, Dushan Ristich. More questions. All right, we'll let these gentlemen go and welcome Coach shortly. Thank you, guys. All right, we'll issue the reminder to please let us know when you have questions. We'll direct the microphone holder to you. And uh, let's go, at, go ahead and open it up to questions for Coach Cohen. John Kuhn, Boston Globe. Um, Coach, just looking at uh, the way the defense progressed over the last half of the season, you had a dozen opponents be held to 70 or fewer points. What really changed defensively for the team as the season progressed? Well, I think I, our, our team just got more and more comfortable with each other, uh, with our defensive concepts. Obviously, I think we have um, you know an experienced group, and as the se as the calendar turns towards March, I think the the sense of urgency in your seniors and your upperclassmen really begins to kick in and um, you know I think it, it shows itself on the defensive end side of the ball. Coach, this might be a dumb question, but how what goes into making sure your guys are loose in a game like this when the entire nation is, is tuning in and you're playing a team like Kansas? No, I don't think it's a dumb question at all. I think it's, it's, it's crucial. I think, um, you know, and that's how we approach the CAA tournament as well. Whenever you're in a kind of one and done uh, type of tournament, uh, you, have to, you have to play with urgency. You have to play with maximum and multiple efforts. But almost most importantly, you have, you have to play loose and be, be true to your DNA, who you are. Um, 
and I think you know if you if you get sh swept up in the enormity of the moment, um, you know, and try to put too much pressure on yourself, that's when you you, you know you kind of don't play your best basketball. Hi, coach. Um, what the, do you embrace the role of, of underdog, or do you try to take them out there and show them that the the rim is ten foot high and you're the same as as your opponent? Yeah, I don't think we've talked much about you know whether we're an underdog or not. I think what we talk talk most about is just being true to ourselves and how do we play our best uh, brand of basketball? How do we? Um, play Northeastern basketball and what does that look like? What does that feel like? Uh, how, do, how can we envision that on the brightest stage? And I think our guys are excited about that. Thanks. Um, Lawson's a guy with uh, NBA size who can play inside and outside. What have you seen in him while studying the, the tape, and especially his passing ability, which is just another dimension? Uh, he's just an outstanding player. Um, as you mentioned, at his size, at 6'9", and, and girth, 230, 235, he's, he's a matchup nightmare. And um, he, he's, a, he's a really good athlete, but he's not an, an, an uber athlete. Uh, but what he has is incredible basketball IQ. He really understands angles. Uh, he's, he's got the uncanny ability to seal people down low and use his size and length in the post. And yet he's a guy that can grab a rebound and start the fast break and dribble, dribble it up. He can uh, you know, take the ball off the dribble from the three-point line and get to the rim. He can make threes. He's a great passer. Uh, so I think, you, you know, uh, leading scorer, leading rebounder in the, in the Big 12, outstanding player and a very difficult matchup for us. So is this one of those classic team efforts to, to deal with him and, and just all different kinds of guys play him in different situations? Yeah, because he'll be moved all over the court. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, we don't have any one guy that can match uh, him you, you know, pound for pound. We're, we're going to have to do it with a group effort. Try to limit his touches when he's in, uh, you know, dangerous scoring positions. But you know, that's that's hard to do. And a lot of people have tried. A lot of good programs have tried to do that. And he's just he finds a way. But like I said, he could be on in the open court. He could be in the low post. He could be at the three point line. He could drive closeouts. So you you're going to have to need a, a really strong uh, team effort to kind of limit him. And uh, coach, outside of Lawson, they obviously got those those four freshmen. You know, all McDonald's, all Americans. When you look at all those guys, what kind of stands out on the tape from from those four freshmen, and have they developed over the course of the season? Well, as you mentioned, they're they're, they're McDonald's all Americans. You don't get scholarships to Kansas if you're a bad player. Uh, really, really good players, and I think they've grown um, uh, throughout the year. Uh, they got great quickness uh, on the perimeter, able to get from end to end, and three or four seconds, they're lightning quick in transition. Uh, but I think, you know, they've, like us, have suffered some adversity, and it's, I think it's brought their team closer together, and they've, they've grown into their new, new identity and have to rely on each other a little bit more strongly than they did at the beginning of the year, and um, I think that shows in their play. Um, the three-point shot is something that you guys have kind of been uh, strong at all season. How big a role do you think that's going to play tomorrow? Well, I think when you, you, you get to this position, first, it's, it's who we are and it's what we do. It's how we're built um, and it's, it's how we like to play. Uh, so we need to, need to get into that comfort zone and be able to space the floor, play with a little space and pace and make shots. Um, and certainly when you're facing a team like Kansas because they can, get, they can score so efficiently with their twos uh, in and around the paint. We can't match them uh, bucket for bucket in the paint. So we're going to have to make some threes to keep pace. Talked about earlier um, how y you need to be true to yourselves and, and true to the DNA of, of the team in this tournament. When you look at the DNA of this team, what what really stands out as catalysts for your success this season? Um, we talk about elite teamwork, and that you know manifests itself in a lot of different ways. Whether it's sharing the ball on offense, 
or help defense or defensive transition um, or having a really lively bench, uh, you, you know, where guys are excited and, and providing energy. Um, and it's doing whatever it takes in your role at the moment uh, to, to get it done. And, you know, I think when, when, when we're at our best, we're, we're exhibiting elite, team, elite teamwork in everything we do. And this group has kind of bought into that and, and it's gotten us here today. Coach, how much has this team been impacted by Max Plansky, and how important is it for Max to be here at the tournament as well? Yeah. Well, thank you so much for bringing it up. You know, Max has been a part of our basketball family for a number of years now, and um, you know, it's all about inclusion, right? There's, it's a big tent, and um, it's so special to have him here at an NCAA tournament event. He's been with us at CAA tournaments and everything else, and uh, was with us the last time in 2015 when we went to the tournament. Um, but I always say, uh, you know, he, he, he gives to the team a whole lot more than he gets when guys, um, and we talk about uh, adversity during the year and somebody sprained an ankle or so on. That's adversity. And to be able to, you know, go through life and, and do it with a smile. And, and if, you, if you're around Max, you know how infectious that can be. And so when he's around the team like that, I think it, it gives us a, a real neat perspective on what's, what's it all about. And uh, to have him here is just really, really special. Um, how important do you think the pace of play is going to be for this game? And what, how do you as a coach go about trying to control the pace so it's, it's played to your speed? Yeah, I think, I think we have to be opportunistic, right? Um, we don't want to to be so, so slow where they can just, you know, kind of overwhelm us in the half court set. We've always been a, a really good uh, transition team, but we don't run every time. We have to pick our spots and we have an advantage. We have to take, we have to put that to use and, and, and use our quick strike offense for a quick three or an easy bucket. Um, but we certainly don't want a, the game to get away from us. And they have enough talent, enough speed that if it gets into a track meet, I think it, it leans to their favor. So. Uh, again, we want to be who we are, and that's always been a team that's been very efficient in transition, but it's, it's, it's not an overwhelming part of what we do. But we, we need transition baskets in order to keep pace. More questions for Coach? Just sort of philosophically and, and you know, not anything real specific, when you look at Kansas defensively, what, what jumps out at you? Well, they, they have the uh, size and length and quickness on the wings to be able to overplay. Um, uh, I think they, they, they have the versatility in their lineup where they can uh, go with a quicker five, maybe in light, light foot or, or you, you know, even Lawson at the five where they can go to a switching defense. Um, they can stand toe to toe and go with a tremendous amount of size in front to make you score over their size and length. Um, so I think, I think you, you, you know, they're, they're built to be, be able to play against multiple types of opponents. Um, you know, if you go really, really big, they have an answer for that. If you go really small, they have an answer for that. Um, and then their quickness and their overplay defense generates some turnovers for you, for them. And, um, you know, we will have to be uh, cognizant of what lineup they have in and how they're trying to defend us and how we can best take advantage of it. Are there any differences in game planning and scouting when you get into an NCAA tournament as opposed to conferences where you, you know, you're very familiar with styles of play and, and tendencies of certain players? I, I think so. I mean, certainly, you know, when you're in a conference and, you know, coaches are generally creatures of habit, right? So if you've coached against a guy for so many years, you there's only so many ways you could do it. You understand how different guys think the game or so on, how to try to attack it. You're familiar with the players. Uh, you have common opponents that you can kind of judge things here by. Um, but when you go in uh, either in your non-conference portion of your schedule or a tournament situation where, like this where the scouting becomes very intense, very quick, uh, that you find out your opponent and then you're quickly into it. But I think it's hard, a little bit harder to, to gauge the, the competition, the body size, and everything else, unless you're familiar with that opponent. Um, and that's the challenge for us today. 
um, when you see them performing against Big 12 type uh, talent, you know, how does that translate to, to CAA body types and, and so on. So, uh, you know, but obviously, you know, we're, we're because of the um, prestige of the Kansas program, we've been able to watch them through the years, you know, uh, and, and admire them from afar. And, you know, there's unquestionably one of the top five programs in the, in the history of, of, of college basketball. More questions? Coach, just from a sort of psychological standpoint, the, the very point you just made, it, it, how much do you present this as an opportunity in, 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 in how you prepare your guys and to look at Kansas? Yeah, I think we talk about opportunity all the time. You know, it's a, you, you know, you, you, uh, there's a great saying we like to say, whether, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. <laughs> and so, um, you know, why, why not choose to believe and, uh, you know, make sure that our guys are in a positive sense of uh, mental state. Um, they're excited. Um, certainly respect all your opponents, but you have to have confidence in yourself in order if you want to achieve what you want to achieve, and that's, that's to move on in this tournament. And, there are no bad teams in this tournament. <laughs> Everybody, everybody's a worthy opponent. Uh, but certainly, I, I think it's natural when you when you look at Kansas and you look at the the, the storied program and the history of that program to get overwhelmed. And I think it's something we talk about. Uh, you know, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. More questions? All right. Thank you. Great. Coach. Thank you, everybody.